This module is about data models. The learning objectives of this module are to, to describe a representation of world with spatial data models. Then there are two types of spatial data models that will be covered in this module, including a vector data model and raster data model. Then we'll compare the two uh, for their advantages and disadvantages. And finally, we will learn about the four data types that are used in uh, describing attributes of spatial data. So spatial data models are needed um, to describe the real world. Um, what is spatial data? It's a data that has a location associated with it. For example, we can talk about intersection of a street. Uh, intersection of two streets, boundary of our campus, path of the Colorado River, elevation of stratosphere, temperature in a park. All of these um, data, data pieces of data require some form of location information associated with them. And we uh, should look at what a, what a model is. Model is a representation of an object, a real object. It is not the actual object, it is not a duplicate of the object, and it is not uh, ever exact. It's a representation and it has its limitations. So if we look at the spatial data model, it's a representation of spatial data. So it's a simplified view of the physical entity that we are interested in. So for example, in case of intersection of streets, it could be a point with the name. Uh, the boundary of UNLV, our campus, could be a polygon with a name, um, and so on and so forth. Um, a line and uh, points and polygons can be used to represent uh, these um, spatial data sets. So when we start talking about spatial data set and location of the data, um, we use geographical coordinates for the surface of the Earth. Now, small regions are uh, approximated as flat surfaces, so Cartesian coordinates with x and y can be used. But when we go through to larger regions, then there are inaccuracies because of the curvature of the surface. And in that case, we use uh, spherical coordinates uh, or longitude and latitude. Um, they are typically symbolized with lambda and phi. And these are angular measurements. So in case of Cartesian coordinates, we have length measurements. And in case of spherical coordinates, we have angular measurements. And these are typically measured with two units, uh, degree, minute, second, and decimal degree. So degree, minute, second is where a circle is divided into 360 degrees. And each degree has 60 minutes and then each minute has 60 seconds. Um, this is the system that we use also in our watches where we have uh, um, uh, 60 seconds in every minute and 60 minutes in every hour. Uh, we can uh, um, convert the DMS or degree minute second into decimal degree where um, we are representing uh, an angle instead of degree minute second uh, in terms of a decimal point. So can go through this um, example and try to understand how degree decimal degree and DMS are converted between each other. So going back to spatial data model, we now we know that location is an important piece. Um, if we have real world, we capture the real world spatial data using three um, three features. One is the geometry of the spatial data, the other one is the attribute, and the last one is topology. The geometry captures the location of the data. The attribute captures the um, characteristics of that data. For example, its name, its, um, and, and any other, other things about that that define that particular feature on the ground. Topology, on the other hand, tells us about the structure of the space. 
are the things adjacent to each other are the things contained within another thing so if we look at this uh, example of the real world we can capture the geometry and attribute and topology in many ways he consider this model where we just create a grid on the surface and for each grid cell we assign a value so for example this particular cell corresponds to here and it picks up B for say blue color um, which is water in this case a stream um, it picks G for green color which is forest but this could be one way of representing a real world here's another uh, way where the stream is connected with these uh, connected dots and it's a line that tells us that this is a, a, a line feature on the other ha hand this little patch of forest could be represented with a, uh, a, a closed area so um, in both of these cases we can see that both the location and geometry um, um, the, the uh, both the geometry attribute and topology all of those things can be captured and if we look at the first model the location the grid size and cell shape tells us the geometry whereas the land cover values bg black they tell us the attribute and the topology is embedded in the order in which these cells are arranged on the other side the topology um, uh, the ge geometry is captured by three types of features a point for the house uh, a line for the river and uh, an area for the polygon attribute is captured by their names so trees house and river um, and lastly topology is captured by their arrangement in the space or their structure in the space we actually have names for these two models the the grid type model is called raster model and the model with lines and points and polygons is called a vector model.